brothers and sisters, I need your attention. As I speak and the spiritual essence of the most high vibrates through my soul, I know that we see the oppression and that we have to find our opposition and giving it a color. Brother, you may call it the man. Sister, you may call it the system. Whatever it is, we all agree it's white. But be clear, when we make the opposition anything outside of ourselves, we begin to miss me, the spirit. I am is you, and I lives in every vessel walking this earth as the word in action. Peace, family. Welcome back to another episode of The Poetry Corner on Lead TV, where poets come and delve into a deep conversation about themselves and their poetry. Today's show will feature a poet that has a consciousness that is so deep that we're going to have to pull back many layers of her mind during our discussion. But I'm sure by the end of this episode, we shall realize her divine. Family, I introduce you to the poet, Miss Ariel Adams. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you for meeting with us today and having this conversation and discussion with us. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We're going to go into um, some background questions and discussion just so people can get a feel for, you know, your background, where you come from and things that you've been through. So we want to know, you know, tell us a little bit about where you're from. I, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, actually. I was raised, right. yes, <laughs> I was raised in East Point, actually, okay. uh -huh. and I, I graduated from South Cobb High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. Studied in Mississippi, and then I came back to Atlanta, and I studied here, and two weeks later, here I am. Great. We're glad you're here. Tell us um, where you did some of your studies at in uh, Mississippi. I went to Mississippi Valley State University. Mississippi Valley, mm -hmm. okay, HBCU. HBCU. All right, how was that? It was a wonderful experience. It was yes, good. because the high school that I went to was very mixed. Oh, um, South very well. I went to North Springs first. I okay. went to North Springs for three years. Okay. And so we had skateboarders in the hallway. We had gothics. We had you know um, jocks. I was a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's very mixed. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to South Cobb my last semester, and I graduated from South Cobb. Okay. So when I went to a HBCU and I seen all the beautiful tall. Black men, <laughs> I was like, this exists, ooh. And it was down the street from <laughs> so many, um, so many artifacts, so much of our history, uh, black history and beyond. And I learned more than I could ever pray for at that time. I was really blessed with great professors mm -hmm. and great people just around me. So it was a great study. I studied literature. Okay, so how did your time here and growing up in Atlanta helped influence you? Oh, well, I was raised up off of CeeLo. Okay. Uh-huh. And um, Andre 3000, mm -hmm. um, Big Boy. Mm -hmm. um, so th that was what I was being stimulated with. My mom liked jazz, so I was stimulated by jazz. Um, my dad is an artist. Um, my stepmother is an artist. Um, they're very creative individual and, and very um, intelligent, mathematic. Mm -hmm type individuals. Um, so I was very stimulated by um, soul-derived experiences. Okay, so you say you studied literature mm -hmm. in college. Um, I could tell by the poem that everybody will be able to see soon that you're well studied. Um, so tell the people some of the things that you may have studied in school and also outside of just your personal studies. Okay. Um, in school, along with literature, there was psychology. I also went to school um, for coding. So I learned how to turn numbers into words, words into numbers, um, which basically, you know, helped my mind to digest and adjust. Um, outside of school, I met some amazing people. Um, I met uh, Moors. I met sovereign individuals. Um, I studied law. Um, my mentor is a lawyer, a damn good lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they helped me along the way. They slid me books and they slid me documents to read. So, um, you know, law of the land. It's a lot right. of good studying. Recommending people one book. My book, Blue Cheese. <laughs> there we go. Blue Cheese, give people some background information on that. Okay. Uh, Blue Cheese is my second book. The first one is The Sacrifice of a Military Wife. The current one, which I just released a few days ago, is Blue Cheese. The name derived from one of my... Um, 
family members being sick and he cooked lemon pepper wings and I love to dip my wings in blue cheese. And so it was all about what you dip yourself into when you're going through your healing. For me, it's blue cheese. The next okay. person, maybe honey mustard ranch. Um, so it's 90 poems because I was born in 1990. I'm 27 um, okay. now. And... Um, it just talks about different experiences in life and, and what I was going through. And some of it is, is terrible. Some of it is bad. Some of it is grimy. Some of it is sanctified. Some of it is righteous. Some of it is um, divine. It's just, you know, not to be afraid of what your mind, body, and spirit is experiencing mm -hmm. and just scattering it out to see, well, okay, that may taste bitter by itself, but if I dip it in this, It'll smooth itself I like out. That. I like that. So tell people where you can they can find that. Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can also contact me through my email, extradesigns at reborn.com or literature.adams at post.com. There we go. We'll make sure that we provide that information for everyone. Now let people know like what's contained within your process, like when it comes to actually writing poetry and specifically you can gear that toward what it took to actually write that book. Okay. Um, specifically gearing it toward what it took to write the book. Mm -hmm. uh, I live a lot. I have a lot of different life experiences. Um, I get over my fears pretty quickly, which gives me room to explore. So um, I used to be the type of person that would not want people to see me angry or mad. So I would collect it and build it up. Mm -hmm. And I had to find a way to get rid of it quickly because I learned that when you harbor things, you, you become still in life. And I've always wanted to continue moving forward. So for me, uh, that became my pen. Mm -hmm. So I, I write whatever it is that I'm feeling, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's poison, whether it's healing, whatever it may be. I need to write it to at least see what it is that I need to diagnose myself. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what creates the book. Um, you know, and studying everything that I have studied, mm -hmm. I can grab some of that knowledge and apply it to what I just wrote, especially if I'm scared of what I just wrote, because mm -hmm. it happens sometimes. <laughs> now, that's good. So it's pretty much do you believe in uh, the saying that what you fear you bring to you? Uh, yeah. I do. I do. If you fear something and you continue to perpetuate it in your mind, um, because I can be here right now, but I could also be in Mexico. I could be in Japan. I can be in Germany, but I'm here right now. So, you know, maybe I'll go to Germany 10 years from now, but whatever I've been thinking of while I'm in Germany could very well perpetuate itself, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's deep. We see the layers being peeled back here, ladies and gentlemen. We really, really do. See, family, I told you, as the layers are peeled back, we will start to see her divinity. We want to make sure that you hashtag on all social media, The Poetry Corner, so we'll be able to see some of your thoughts and your comments on tonight's episode. We will see a poem from Ariel entitled Social Security after we return from these messages. The past cannot exist after the future. The future cannot become before the past. But this is how we communicate today and this is why negative situations are set up. The language communicated with the future that is verbalized in the present disregarding the past keeps man owning that which does not exist and ignoring now touche until it which do exist meets the future of a physical thought abandoned by the past because man feels more freedom in the presence of five more minutes. 
This is an example of the court system going straight to adjudication, never releasing the status or jurisdiction. This plan or means of communication that is practiced and counting over 8,500 years has and still pervert the majority of the people on earth into slavery or death by fictional knowledge consolidated by the system that responds directly to the future. Divine is authenticated through the spirit, although the mind of the majority has been tricked, are now standing in a disagreement with the source being the universal God. Man knows that there is a void and such, but he is a man of pride, therefore he yields not to challenge the mind, but instead he challenges the ego, which challenges the emotion charged by what is now a negative setup about feeling stuck in what he hints to be positive in the future, provoking the next man's ego challenges the other man's emotions of not knowing that knowing there is a void of his natural authenticity yielding his pride toward the presence of his future manipulated by fictional wording believed to be the extinction of his past where thoughts don't exist therefore deeming what is real to be fake and what is fake to be. Many men are not and subconsciously do not recognize themselves as being alive. So they are walking around dead trying to find life that really exists in divine energy now. That was a poem written and performed by Ariel Adams entitled Social Security. I am grateful to be sitting in the presence of such a divinely inspired woman. She is surely a beacon of light. We're going to go into... I poem interview discussion at this time. So let people know, you know, why did you name the poem Social Security? I named the, the poem Social Security, um, obviously off of, you know, Social Security and dealing with, you know, people who have to get assistance from the government. But also because uh, the way that we socialize, we do things for security in mm -hmm. a social aspect. So mm -hmm. that's genuinely why it was named social mm -hmm. security and I can see that and again our social society how we deal um, with our peers in the public has layers to it which we can see why the poem will have so many layers and different aspects to it so explain further your analogy um, that correlates past present and future thought to the government uh, okay um, past we'll start with that the only thing that I learned in public school about my past is that my people were slaves. Right. I did not know that my people were kings and queens and uh, had the DNA and the blood of, of royalty until I got out of public school and went into a library and began to meet other uh, enlightened or divine intellectual individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the, the past is there, you know what I mean? If you're going to talk about the past, talk about the, the real past, right. you know what I mean? Or talk about the whole past. I paint a whole picture. Instead of just giving us a snippet of what you want us to see. Exactly. Um, so then you have the, the present. The present, we, we rarely um, are involved in the present because there is a lot of pain that is associated with the present. But it's only pain in the present because it's associated with the past. Right yeah. now, there is nothing that's wrong with anyone. We're fine. Um, but it, a thought could come so quickly of, you know, um, what happened that was horrible in childhood right. that could totally take you away from what's presently going on. And right. I, I think that's a part of mental slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have the future, which is not yet to come. You plan to get to uh, the future. But um, like I say in the poem, uh, man feels more alive or more present in five more minutes. You know, how you wake up in the morning and 
your mom as a child tells you, uh, it's time to go to school, and you're like, oh, no, give me five more minutes. minutes. You're right. That's the only time you can feel like you got some freedom or something. Right, because of where you're going in the future. You you, you know that you're going to school, but you related to going to school yesterday, and, you know, the teacher got on your nerves. You're you're learning about your people that was hung. Um, Everybody was a slave. Um, You're going to get in trouble if you, you know, talk um, too loud or if you giggle, if you have any fun, you know what I mean? So that's... In your present, you're thinking about your past. That's keeping you from your future. Right. There we go. There we go. Dang, that's deep, (laughs) y'all. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Dr. Bates of Journey Family Chiropractic. Here at our office, we use a whole self approach to your care. What that means is we use chiropractic care, nutrition, and exercise. With this, it creates a healthy body, spirit, and mind. Here at Journey Family Chiropractic, our goal is to help you accomplish a quality state of health. At Journey Family Chiropractic, I see a range of different people, but I specialize in the care of women and children. As a woman and a mom, I know the problems women endure, from pregnancy to difficulty losing weight. With chiropractic care, we allow the body to heal itself with what is called adjustments. Journey Family Chiropractic can help you reach your full potential, so book your appointment today. You can get 50% off your first visit. Call 678-333-7919 or visit our website at www.journeyfamilychiro.com. And what happens is usually when we go to court, you either have to plead guilty or not guilty. And I think now they have no low. Right. Um, And so you automatically have to plead something and pleading is begging. Right. And so... You're honestly automatically guilty mm-hmm. when you come in there. Mm-hmm. And so they don't ask you who you are. They don't al- allow you to ask them, well, who are you? Right, and what because gives you the right over me? Which, what gives you the right over, over me? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, in my opinion, that is the worst thing that you can do to a human being because it, it keeps them thinking forward negatively. Mm-hmm. And therefore, nothing can be cleared up in that aspect. Mm-hmm. So um, you have that part where you have to do the adjudication. Um, And then you have jurisdiction, um, which is basically you have different, how could I describe squares? You have different squares, all right? So let's just say you're from East Point and I'm from Atlanta, Mm -hmm. all right? If you're in Atlanta, then I would have to send you back to East Point to be taken care of Mm -hmm. because that's your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But instead, the way that it works is, well, if you come to Atlanta and you're from East Point, then I'm going to take care of you under Atlanta. I don't really care where you're from. I'm not going to ask you where you're from. I'm Mm -hmm. just going to make you plead like they do in court, guilty, not guilty, or no low, Mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And then the next step was status. Who are you? Where are you from? Mm-hmm. What's your status? Mm-hmm. You know, they don't, they don't. Don't even go do into status. Forward. People like, you know, status. They don't do it forward. They do it backward to send you forward, but backward. Mm-hmm. And that's how the world is right now. And I think that's why we have so many social issues, Mm -hmm. because the system that we trust and the system that we follow and the system that we sometimes believe in, but know it doesn't work, so we really don't believe in it, but the majority of us do, and we know that if we don't comply, then there will be consequences, and we don't really want to face those consequences. Even though we can't afford the consequences that they're giving us, we don't want to face the consequences that we don't know about, which is in the future because our past was about being hung right. and our present is keeping us from the future so we're just going to do what you want us to do to send us forward meaning out the door but to the back meaning of the line to start mm-hmm. all over because you just took all of my money right right, <laughs> right. and i can see that and what i would like to pass to anyone watching would be study 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 so you can understand deeper exactly what you just spoke about as well as those definitions you library is your best friend it's a lot of knowledge hidden in libraries um as well as um, from my personal experience studying the stuff that you studied and uh going into the meaning of those definitions 
Anyone right now can Google Black's Law Dictionary, PDF, and be able to download a PDF version and have a law dictionary right there in front of them to be able to look up adjudication, status, jurisdiction, and then be able to apply that knowledge to the circumstances that you might have encountered or other people might have encountered around you to be able to put that in a better perspective than to just say, oh, well, she said it was this. You can look this up for yourself to get your own knowledge, you know? Uh huh. I encourage you to define exactly what all those words mean. And also, it, it's levels to it as well. You can take the club perspective. You know, you, you get in the, the line with, you know, your girlfriends or your guy friends and you go into the club and they make you wait because they're trying to show other people their authority. And then you get to the front of the line and it's something that you may or may not can afford. You're either going to pay for it and go for it, knowing that you're coming right back out of that <laughs> club to go home, or you can leave and go and get in another line that's least expensive, or you can go home. I mean, it's, it's levels to, to everything, but it's all about people wanting to be secure socially. Eh, God is the security, and that's all in you, and that's where I recommend people starting their studies um, internal. Right. Yep, everything is from within. Within controls without. I hope that consciousness has risen throughout this discussion. There has been so much covered that I would like Ariel to do one thing for us at this time. Ariel, please tell the family one thing you would like them to take away from your poem, and then one thing you would like them to take away from our discussion. Okay, I want to tell the family, um, one thing that I think they should take is uh, manifestation. Um, when you think about the past, the present, and the future, uh, when you're manifesting, if a past thought come into your mind, make sure it is of the highest, of the highest, of the highest past thought that you can ever bring into your mind about yourself, your ancestors, and then take that in your present, and then manifest for your future. Keep the hashtags coming, the Poetry Corner. We're looking at them, we're checking them out, and we're going to make sure that we correspond with you all and have an open dialogue with you all as well. So make sure that you keep your thoughts coming as it pertains to the Poetry Corner. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm human. I'm a creator. I'm a mother. I'm beautiful. I could be you but I have epilepsy. Do you look at me different now? Epilepsy lives matter. Welcome to Name This Poet. Which of the following poets published several autobiographies? Was it A. Sonia Sanchez, B. Phyllis Wheatley, or C. Maya Angelou? The answer is C. Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou became a poet and writer after a series of occupations as a young adult, including a fry cook, coordinator for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and journalist in Ghana and Egypt during the decolonization of Africa. Stay tuned for more of Name This Poet. Today has been such a great discussion, filled with much light, a light that is divine, and now is the time that we bid you all adieu. But before we close, Ariel, can you tell the people how they can reach you for booking? Yes, you can email me at extradesigns at reborn.com or literature.adams at post.com.
You can also follow me on Instagram at Nirvana underscore love and on Facebook at Ariel L. Adams. Ariel, we're here at Lee Media LLC, Lead TV, and the Poetry Corner. Thank you for speaking with us. We look forward to seeing your progress because you have today revealed to us all a divine light. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are so very welcome. Family, we hope that you have enjoyed episode three of the Poetry Corner. Ariel has truly sought to raise consciousness through her poem, Social Security. Make sure that you all stay tuned for more episodes. Tell a friend and tell that friend and tell a friend, too, about the Poetry Corner and to subscribe to Lead TV on YouTube. I am Jabe. Follow me on Instagram at Jabe underscore third eye and follow Lead Media LLC on Instagram at Lead Media Company. We look forward to seeing you all next week as we premiere episode four of the Poetry Corner with our first male guest from the south side of Atlanta, Kendall Jackson. Family, we leave you all in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Peace, family. <laughs>